and on that day that crown will be given to Paul by the righteous judge and also to those who long for the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ the eternal and unchanging word of god one story one story 93 second timothy everyone who wants to live a godly life in jesus christ will be persecuted second timothy chapter 1 to chapter 4 Paul sent a second letter to Timothy the son of faith and this second pastoral epistle to Timothy was Paul's 13th letter chronologically and the last epistle of Paul's life so unlike 1 Timothy it is not only pastoral counsel but also the last message to all Christians as a man of God who through God's grace has been called by Jesus Christ and has lived as a servant of Jesus Christ all his life Join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Through Paul's message, we can once again discover the value of life on this earth that the Bible talks about. First, Paul said to Timothy, "As night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers." This is because Paul recalls Timothy's tears and was reminded of Timothy's sincere faith. However, after Paul said, "For God did not give us a spirit of timidity but a spirit of power of love and of self discipline he said so do not be ashamed to testify about our lord or ashamed of me his prisoner but join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of god in other words it means work without rest for the gospel with me but to live a complete life for the gospel in this world suffering will surely be accompanied Then Paul declared, God who has saved us and called us to a holy life not because of anything we have done but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. Paul had a clear criterion about calling. Paul knew that his calling to preach the gospel as a child of God was entirely according to the grace given to Paul in Christ Jesus from before eternity. It was not a calling based on Paul's life before and after the calling. This is very important. We must do our best in our lives, but that is not the foundation of the calling that called us. That's why Paul said, not because of anything we have done, it must be remembered that our best is done as those who have received this holy calling not become qualified for the calling. That is why Paul said, but It has now been revealed through the appearing of our savior Christ Jesus who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel and of this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher saying that he was appointed as a gospel herald gospel apostle and gospel teacher for the very gospel of Jesus Christ how clear is this identity Although the world will add suffering to those who preach the gospel by crucifying Jesus Christ who came through the gospel on the cross but Paul was ending the rest of his life as a foreigner heading home I am suffering as I am yet I am not ashamed Again Paul is called by Jesus Christ who came as the gospel and as a preacher of the gospel he suffers but said he is not ashamed This is because Paul knew whom he believed and was convinced that he was able to guard what was entrusted to him for that day. This is the faith of the person who is commissioned. God will do it. God started it. With this faith, Paul was able to say to Timothy, "What you heard from me, keep as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you." God did with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Also, there was also one Asaphras who refreshed Paul and was not ashamed of him, and searched hard for him and visited him. But everyone in Asia abandoned Paul. Still, the servant of Jesus Christ must go that way, because that way is the way we go by looking only at Jesus Christ. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Paul is calling Timothy my son while living alone as a preacher of the gospel. He had no children biologically 
but regarded Timothy as his son of faith and wrote the last epistle of his life to Timothy, saying, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus, conveying a message from his heart. It meant to be strong and continually preach the word of God in Jesus Christ who called Timothy. And to suffer with Paul as a soldier, again to receive suffering continually means to preach the gospel continually. Paul said that, this race should not be stopped and be like a soldier serving in the military. He said not to be like soldier involved in civilian affairs but please his commanding officer. Paul said as a person who competes as an athlete will not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules so be like an athlete and like the hardworking farmer. It is natural. If we were really called in Jesus Christ through the true Almighty God who called us with His perfect call, then we have to live a life worthy of the calling we have received. Remember Jesus Christ Paul proclaimed Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is the Gospel. In the phrase, descended from David, the Old Testament is contained for the Jews and in the phrase raised from the dead not only the resurrection Jesus Christ but the entire life of Jesus Christ is melted. Paul said to remember that very Jesus Christ. Through the gospel Paul suffered even to the point of being chained like a criminal but proclaimed that God's word is not chained. Paul said that those elected by God endure everything for the sake that they may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Paul went on to say that just as we died with the Lord, we will also live with Him. If we endure, we will also reign with Him. If we disown Him, He will also disown us. Because if we are faithful, He will remain faithful, for He cannot disown Himself. All our hope is not in us, but in our Lord Jesus Christ, who raised from the dead. That is why Paul told Timothy, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved a workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love and peace. Paul said to Timothy, in a large house there are articles not only gold and silver but also a wood and clay. Some are for noble purposes and some for ignoble. If a man cleanses himself from the latter, he will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, useful to the master and prepared to do any good work. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you know they produce quarrels. What is more important than the shape of the bowl is how clean it is. That is why the Bible says, How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. Paul also said to Timothy, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly handles the word of truth. God says, Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. In addition, Paul said, And the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Instead, he must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Those who oppose him, he must gently instruct, in the hope that God will grant them repentance leading them to a knowledge of the truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil, who has taken them from captive to do his will. It is said that the Lord's servant, the man of God, should not quarrel, be humble, be good at teaching, be patient, and humbly admonish those who oppose. It is because we do not know what changes will be made to those adversaries in God's way and time. Even though it seems like despair from our judgment, Apostle Paul is a representative case. Have nothing to do with those having a form of godliness but denying its power. Paul said, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, 
boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. Likewise, Paul said, having a form of godliness but denying its power, having nothing to do with them. At that time, when Greek philosophy dominated, there were women who outwardly showed reverence but were morally ethical in life, loved to learn new knowledge and were eager to simply learn the teachings of truth. They just enjoyed learning. That is why Paul said that those who learn like the weak-willed women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning but never able to knowledge the truth. It must be understood that learning the truth and learning the word of God are not learning for knowledge but learning to live according to the word. Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Jesus Christ will be persecuted. Paul said, You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kind of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium and Lystra, the persecution I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. Although he was Paul who lived a life filled with the Holy Spirit as a man of God and a servant of Jesus Christ, called by the perfect love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ, his life constantly had persecution and suffering. It is as Jesus said, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The persecution on this earth for those who have received the kingdom of heaven and those who have embraced it does not mean only external persecution. It is also persecution to deny the joy of a world that has been enjoyed and served like an idol. That is why Paul said, In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Jesus Christ will be persecuted. Paul went on to say, While evil men and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of. Although living in the world, God's people must not pursue the world but become someone the world cannot bear. All scripture is so that the man of God may be good. At the time of the early church, faith and theology were not established yet. There were disciples who followed Jesus Christ closely and some who learned from them. But there were many false teachers and especially the teachings of legalists were the greatest harm to the gospel. That is why Paul said to Timothy, Know those from whom you learned it. Paul taught that he did not receive from any man, nor was he taught, but received it by a revolution from Jesus Christ. Paul was also a zealous person in the Old Testament, but he only delivered the word of God after realizing the perfect Bible, the law added with Jesus Christ from the law known without Jesus Christ. He only knew and preached Jesus Christ and his cross. So Paul proclaimed, And how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scriptures is God breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is the word. Only the word of God is life. It is the word that brings the man of God to salvation, teaches, rebukes, corrects and trains us in righteousness and equipped to do every good work. Neither our determination nor our devotion can change us unless the word of God becomes life and holds our hearts. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Now Paul said to preach that word. He sternly commanded, even in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom. He said not to hold on to the results revealed by preaching the word, but to always strive whether in season or out of season. He said to be patient and correct, rebuke and encourage, because the more the world leads toward evil, men will not put up with second doctrine.
and they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear and they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths the word of god which is the truth can only be heard by those whose hearts have been open and have their heart penetrated by god keep your head in all situations endure hardship do the work of an evangelist discharge all the duties of your ministry paul said not to act like foolish people mentioned before but keep their head in all situations endure hardship do the work of an evangelist discharge all the duties of their ministry just as jonathan came to david who was running away from his father's soul and made him rely strongly on god not on any help in the world instead of telling him anything useful in this world Paul told Timothy to carry out the mission of the calling to the end. Now Paul confessed, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. It is the image of a pilgrim who ends the life of a foreigner heading home and heads for the true rest. There is in store for me the crown of righteousness. Now Paul's second letter to Timothy is coming to an end. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. The crown of righteousness that Paul waits and longs for is eternal life. And Jesus Christ, who is the perfect righteous, even in the kingdom of God, we should not compare with a golden crown and a silver crown. Calling was God's exclusive grace, and fulfilling the mission with all of our lives is also God's grace. and it is foolish to find and seek better things based on that basis in the complete kingdom of god where there is no comparison no sense of inferiority no boost jesus christ the crown of eternal life is enough jesus christ to whom be glory for ever and ever first paul told timothy get mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry Mark John accompanied Paul and Barnabas as a companion during the first mission but left Paul and Barnabas and returned to Jerusalem. And when Paul went on his second mission, he quarreled with his beloved co-worker Barnabas and even split up over the issue of Mark's companionship. However, after time, Paul called Mark as his co-worker and Paul, who was about to die, wanted to see Mark. This is the fruit of Paul the apostle father. It is forgiveness that is greater than a ministry moving a mountain. It is to accept, it is to cover. Jesus came for this. Paul told Timothy to come quickly. Paul said Demas, whom Paul called as one of his fellow workers, loved this world, has deserted Paul and other fellow workers went on each of their ministry, and only Luke was with Paul. Paul even said at my first defense no one came to my support but everyone deserted me but Paul said may it not be held against them because but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the gentiles might hear it and i was delivered from the lion's mouth the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom He was full of joy and confidence as a foreigner heading home. It is a hope for an eternal life that cannot be exchanged or threatened by anything in the world. And to him be glory for ever and ever. Was Paul's last confession like proclamation. In every effort and every dedication only Jesus Christ need to be glorified. The story of Jesus Christ, the story of the people of God who have Jesus Christ as their savior and live the life of a foreigner heading home the story of persecution and suffering that will not end in this world but denying the world and living the rest of the life shouting to him be glory for ever and ever the story of living the rest of the life like a day the stories of the people of faith who are proud of such a life and invite others to live such a life together that story of jesus christ continues